what we are trying to do with this activity is something more important than knowing content. It is making the connection between a question. So when a question is something, why is the answer the answer? Like that's what we are trying to do here. Okay, and that uh, I hope, uh, I mean, I always end up talking more than I want to. Like I try to do these things as succinctly as possible. But it's just very, very important to me that you guys understand um, why it is that we are doing something. Like there's, there's so much more to this subject than simply the facts. That's, that's why maybe my videos and things tend to be a bit more rambly because I just have more to say on it, uh, perhaps. But anyway, this is what we are trying to do here. By going through this paper, it's not about content, okay? It's not about me proving how much I know or me looking like an idiot because I don't know something. What it is about is trying to figure out the reasons why the mark scheme is the mark scheme based on what the question is. And if we can figure out this magical thing in the middle that connects the question to the answer, if we can figure that out, then that means in the future, when we are presented with a question, we will be more confident of writing down the answer. So let's do this together. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the multiple choice section. Um, Membranes are found within and surrounding cells. Which of the statements A to D is not? A role of membranes in cells. Okay. Um, which of the statements A to D? So, which of these is essentially not a role of membranes in cells? Uh, a acts as a barrier between areas. Well, that is true. Uh, membranes have a role in cell signaling, that is true. Membranes provide support for a cell, I'm not sure if that's true. Is the site of chemical reactions, that is true. So I'm not 100% sure of this, but I'm pretty sure membranes, of all the four, this is the least likely. Okay, so my answer for the first question is going to be C. Next question. Which of the statements A to D about amylopectin is correct? Uh, it contains, so amylopectin is the branched form of um, starch. Okay, so it contains one to four and one to six glycosidic bonds between alpha glucose monomers, that is true. So is correct, so I'm looking for the true statement. It is an unbranched chain of alpha glucose monomers is not true because it is not unbranched. It contains alpha four, alpha one to four and beta one to four glycosidic bonds. There are no beta one to six glycosidic bonds. It is made up of beta glucose, which it is not. So the first one is true. So, I mean, this one of the pieces of advice that I give to students regarding multiple choices don't just look for the correct answer, also confirm that the other ones are not correct. Okay, next question. Which row, so this is a picture of a uh, blood smear, which row correctly lists the cells that are visible in the smear? So we have to pick one of these options. Okay. Um, what I would do is first of all, I would exclude the ones that I know are definitely not there. So monocytes, lymphocytes are definitely not there because lymphocytes, so um, I've, I've pulled up a picture of a blood smear here and we can see that a monocyte, oh uh, sorry, a lymphocyte is um, a cell that has very little cytoplasm and has, or a nucleus surrounded by a very little cytoplasm. And you know, that's not the case in any of the cells that we can see there. So we can disclude, based on that, we can disclude options C and D. It is not any of those because we, we, we don't have lymphocytes, okay? 
Now of the two remaining options we have a choice between having erythrocytes which is red blood cells and neutrophils so erythrocytes and neutrophils or erythrocytes i.e. red blood cells monocytes and neutrophils so if we look on the image on the left now monocyte is a rather large cell um, large nucleus a reasonable amount of cytoplasm around it um, but neutrophils are those cells with kind of uh, a lobed multi-lobed nucleus okay now if we look in the image we, we really don't have any monocytes there we do have neutrophils however so um, our option is going to be B okay so put that away now okay just check that yeah for question 3 B is the correct answer next the haploid chromosome number in koala is 8 independent assortment of chromosomes in meiosis contributes to genetic variation in the gametes of the koala how many genetically different versions of koala gamete would it be possible for one individual to produce if the independent assortment were the only source of genetic variation if we had one chromosome pair so the haploid number in the koala is eight that means it's got eight different chromosomes in each of the gametes so in the sperm there's eight chromosomes and in the egg there's eight chromosomes however in the cell that underwent meiosis there were eight pairs of chromosomes what that means is the answer to this question is two to the number of pairs of chromosomes and so the answer to this would be 2 to the 8 which should be 256 which of the following processes occur during DNA replication breakage and reformation of phosphodiester bonds breakage and re-breakage and reformation of phosphodiester bonds during replication does not occur breakage and reformation of hydrogen bonds does occur alignment of free nucleotides with their complementary bases does occur so two and three should be okay next question which of the statements a to d best defines the term species evenness um, the relative abundance of each species in an area so the number of species in an area that is actually richness so the number of different species in an area is richness so it, it can't be that the relative abundance of each species in an area is a possibility the relative number of individuals of a species of a species in an area that is not richness or evenness that's more abundance I guess so it's less likely to be that the spread of species over an area no it's not really that either okay it's, it's it's about the comparison between different species so this is the only statement that's making reference to that the relative abundance of each species in an area so B should be the answer to that the first stage of primary succession is the pioneer community which of the following statements about a pioneer community are correct species produce large numbers of wind carried seeds and or spores biomass is low many species are lichens and mosses okay so i think the first the, the two and three are easy to identify this one is a bit of a question though species produce large numbers of wind carried seeds or spores 
um, which is correct um, because I mean, and I'll admit this I would have got only two and three okay however the mock scheme tells us it is a and this is part of the process guys you know I would have answered this it turns out to be wrong I look at the mark scheme and then I try and think like you know why is that so why is it correct because think about how the pioneer species actually came to colonize um, you know this lifeless area in the first place so the idea being that you know you've got a an area with no life in it abiotic conditions are not favorable however wind carried seeds seeds and spores end up landing on the area and you know because they have a particular types of adaptations and they can survive in this area um, they can colonize it and start to change the abiotic factors and so on and so on so I guess that that makes sense okay next the graph shows a typical population growth curve which role correctly describes what is happening at at each of stages v to z okay now with any graph question what we do is we look at the x-axis then we look at the y-axis and then we start to look at what is going on there okay so on the x-axis we've got time so things are changing with time we've got a population size that's so the graph is showing how the population size changes as time goes on and we are seeing the f the, the growth curve um, in the middle of the graph great okay should be straightforward now which row correctly describes what is happening at each of the stages v to z okay so um, uh, let's read option A. Reproduction is higher than death rate. Reproduction is higher than death rate. So if you look down here, just to save us a bit of time, reproduction is higher than death rate. Reproduction is higher than death rate. Reproduction is higher than death rate. They're all the same. Okay, so reading V doesn't help us to discriminate between any of these. Okay, um, there looks like there is variation in W. X is also different. Y is also different and reproduction rate is similar to death rate and it looks like z reproduction z is also the same so our decision is going to be based on these three okay um, so now it's up to us to decide which of a b c or d based on w x and y is showing what is really ha or is describing what is really happening so if we look at W, as time doubles, population doubles. So that's a bit of a question mark right there, because if population was doubling with time doubling, then we would expect a straight line, and it's obviously a curve. So that puts a question mark on that one. Um, as time doubles population more than doubles could that could be a possibility as time doubles population doubles again question mark population is increasing rapidly that's kind of vague so don't want to choose that one population size is proportional to time so at x now population size is proportional to time reproduction rate is much higher than death rate that is a true statement population size is proportional to time i'm not really sure about these reproduction rate is much higher than death rate population growth is slowing population growth is slowing at y now population growth is slowing population growth is slowing population growth is 
decreasing is also true. Population is decreasing is definitely not true at Y. So I guess the one that is satisfying most of our conditions is B. So that's the one I will go with. Okay, so what question are we on? 8. 8 is B. Thank God for that. Right. 9. Cut pieces of agar jelly can be used to investigate the factors affecting diffusion rates in cells. Four pieces of agar jelly containing universal indicator were soaked in the same concentration of hydrochloric acid for one minute. The cubes were then removed and blotted dry. Which of, which of the following pieces of agar jelly would be the first to turn entirely red? I guess um, one thing, it might not be very obvious, but a universal indicator will turn red in the presence of acid. Okay, so what, what we are looking at is rate of diffusion. Okay, so whichever one whichever one has got the highest rate of diffusion, the acid will diffuse into the cube. And as it does so, it will turn the indicator in, into the, in the cube all red. So the question is asking which of these shapes, which of these shapes would have the highest rate of diffusion of the acid into the cube? Okay. Um, so, I mean, for me, I'm looking for the one with the shortest distance. So you've got a cube with four centimeters, you've got a cube with four centimeters edges. Um, you've got other shapes, you've got a sphere with diameter of four. Um, but here, this cuboid right here, even though it's got six centimeters dimensions and four centimeters dimension, it is a shape like this where even though its width is quite high its length is quite long but that distance that thickness of this shape is only two centimeters so that of all the shapes that's got the shortest distance to the center so that's going to have the shortest diffusion distance and therefore it is B okay so let's move on 10 which of the options a to d is a primary defense against pathogens so antibody production is not primary inflammation could be primary phagocytosis you could argue is primary t killer cells definitely not primary um, phagocytosis if I remember correctly phagocytosis is a cell mediated defense mechanism so that is not um, primary it kind of happens secondary to an initial uh, penetration shall we say of pathogens um, inflammation then is the first is one of the first lines of defense therefore I will go inflammation and not phagocytosis Okay, moving on. The diagram below shows part of a plasma membrane. Which of the label lines points to a structure that could contain a sulfur atom? Sulfur, interesting. Okay, that's not how you spell it. Sulfur. Right, so we're thinking sulfur. Sulfur can be found in some amino acids, and amino acids make up proteins and proteins can be found in membranes so the next question is which of these structures could be or which of these labels one two or three are pointing to proteins and by my estimation it looks like one is the only one so one is pointing to a protein two is pointing to a carbohydrate and three is pointing to a phosphate head um, of a phospholipid. Um, so one is the answer, only one.
12. Which of the following statements about gene therapy is not correct? So changes resulting from gene therapy cannot be passed on to offspring. Not entirely sure about that. Germline therapy affects the whole organism. That is true. Gene therapy is a form of genetic engineering. Yes, we are creating a genetically modified organism. We are changing the initial genomic information that that organism uh, had, has. Somatic cell gene therapy can only affect a limited number of cells, which is correct. So it brings us to A. We, let's have another look at that. Changes resulting from gene therapy cannot be passed on to offspring. Well, they can if, if the cells that are modified um, give rise to gametes and germline germline therapy is a form of gene therapy and those changes will affect the whole uh, will affect the offspring because the gametes formed from this individual will have the modified genomic information so i will go a with that one 13. Below are three processes that occur within living organisms, apoptosis, mitosis, meiosis. Which of these processes is important in determining the body plan of an organism? Well, apoptosis, yes. Mitosis, yes. Meiosis, um, I would say no. So which of these processes is important in determining the body plan of an organism? One and two is what I would go. Meiosis, meiosis forms the gametes, but once the gametes are formed and once gametes fuse with each other to form the zygote, from that point the body plan is already forming um, or taking place. So um, I will say not meiosis. I mean, on that note, yeah, that's fine. Mitosis has been addressed. Okay. Um, three methods of pathogen transmission between animals or plants are listed. Oh, yeah, this is the one that had an error. So the the erratum that was published was which of the me so three methods of pathogen transmission between animals or plants are listed below: direct contact, vectors, droplets. Which of the methods of pathogen transmission does not apply to plants? And come on, OCR, you can't sort out your exam papers? Jeez, it's embarrassing. Now, for which of the, now what they made an error here was, which of the methods of pathogen transmission can, can apply to plants? That's the error that had to be corrected. Uh, on the day of the exam, which I'm sure students found very useful. Um, uh, one, two, and three. So direct contact between plants, vectors, and droplets. Vectors and droplets. Now, I would say droplet, inf droplet transmission is something um, that affects organisms with respiratory systems, which are inhaling uh, air and thereby droplets contained in the air can then enter an organism that way and, and the pathogens in the droplets can then cause infection. So I'm going to cross out droplet infection and say that one and two can apply to plants. Right, the image below shows a European badger, Melis melis, which is a member of the family Mustelidae. The American badger belongs to a different genus within the same family. So let's remember our classification family, genus, species, and it's these two that go into the binomial name. Which of the options A to D is the correct binomial name for the American badger, given that the American badger belongs to a different genus within the same family? Right, so the European badger, Melis, 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 
is a member of the family. The American badger belongs to a different genus, same family. So, its first name is going to be different. Remember, the name goes, that's the genus. And that is the species. So it's got a different genus. Okay, so all we have to do is look for the name in this list that does not begin with Melis. Because we know that it's a different genus. Okay, so which of them could it be? Now, I was a bit thrown when I saw this the first time, but <clears throat> if we look at this list, we can see that this is definitely not the right answer because it has, it is part of the genus of Melis, right? And we are told that the American badger belongs to a different genus, so it cannot be A. But then that means that it could be any of these three, which is fair enough, but if you look at this, and this is why I think surely OCR you have better things to do with your time but if you look at this list there's only one which kind of corresponds or conforms to the proper naming system right because this little m little m i.e. lowercase um, so things are not correct here so the names are not right according to the binomial naming um, rules shall we say um, so it has to be Taxidea Taxus because that's the only one that is not Melis and conforms to binomial naming rules so D is the answer to that one right that ends the multiple choice section and we'll continue with the longer answer questions.